Good morning, everyone. Welcome, everyone. 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 Welcome to the developer chat here at Privateer Press for October 2nd, 2019. Mm -hmm. I know that it's the second because I fly back to Louisiana tomorrow on the third. Mm -hmm. Going on vacation. Also, it's we put on the notes. And also, to the, the, notes. the TV always tells us the date. Uh, we've got it re redundancy. We've got redundancy because yeah. I'm super yeah. bad at getting the dates right. Yeah. Uh, if you've never watched this before, uh, welcome. Uh, we here at Private to Press stream at least twice a week, but sometimes more. We always do the dev chat Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this is the show where we talk about what's going on with the games. Monster Apocalypse, Riot, Quest, War Machine, and eventually Warcaster. Yeah. Kind of uh, talking with us, the development team, about rules-related things and, and new releases and, and yeah. cool stuff like that. Get your paint on is Thursdays with Jordan Lamb, our studio painter, where he paints the miniatures to play the games and talks to you about mm -hmm. hobby tips and tricks to do so. Uh, we do staff showdowns. We just did one yesterday for Riot Quest, which was a blast, and Jeff Hanley stole victory from me. So As I will have happens to, in Riot Quest. I will have to get revenge. The next one's actually right around the corner. We're doing the next one on October 14th, and we're going to be playing War Machine. We're going to be playing one of the Oblivion narrative scenarios. We're going to have two players on. Hopefully, we'll actually have an Infernal Army mm -hmm. rocking. These will be the players' own armies, not the studio armies. I don't think anyone's got the, the bravery to play with an entire studio army. Well, I don't think we have a whole studio army. We've got a lot of we got Monster Apocalypse. We can make it work. Riot Quest. We can make it work. We don't, I don't think we have a big enough collection of studio painted anything War Machine yet. We can make it Tony's work. working on it. We can Tony's working work. on it. Uh, and the last show, On the Brink of Annihilation, is Hobby Hangout with Danny Samuels. Uh, this is Danny's show where he... Kit bashes, converts, and teaches you how to build terrain. Danny is the guy that does all the amazing tables and custom terrain you see here. Um, you know, without your viewership, we're going to have to cancel Danny. The show will carry on, <laughs> but uh, Danny has to, yeah, you know. just no more Danny. Just no more Danny. So if you want to support Danny in the show, make sure you catch that. Next one's October 11th at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. So other important announcement about those of you who are watching. We're doing this on Twitch and Facebook, and we are doing subscriptions on Twitch. We've been doing this for about three weeks now. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we're giving you, if you subscribe, you get the Private to Press subscriber badge, and you get yep. a handful of super succulent emojis. Mm -hmm. Now, we are trying to get to 65 subs, because as soon as we hit 65, we can unlock more emojis. And in fact, mm -hmm. we are going to do a poll with all of you for what those new emojis will be. Uh, we'll be posting the links in the chats right now and in the descriptions of this when it goes up on YouTube. Yep. But right now, the choices for the new emojis, you've got the Steamroller logo, the Masters logo, Chibi Ashlyn, Chibi, another thing that Tony took the screen down, uh, the Monster Apocalypse Donut Factory, the Riot Quest Loot Coins, or the Riot Quest Death Trap Token. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can go and vote what you want the new emojis to be, but we have to get to 65 subs to be able to unlock those emojis. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you that have subbed, thank you very much for showing your support. And for those of you subbing during the show, thank yeah. you very much. We love you. Also, time. always remember, if you have an Amazon Prime account, Amazon and Twitch are connected. They are. So Amazon Prime gives you one free Twitch subscription that doesn't cost you any money. No. You can just click on a subscribe button, and it will give that person five bucks a month or whatever. And you don't have to do anything for it. A lot of people forget that that if they have a Prime account, they get all these other weird benefits. And that's one of them. So if you're not using it for anything else, just, use it just give it to us. Just give it to us. Yeah. We love you. Look, at, and there's just subs yeah. coming in. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Dr. Dinosaur uh, and a few other people. Before we get to today's topics, uh, I do want to talk about Mini Crate real fast, because mm -hmm. we always do. Mm -hmm. The current Mini Crate is Little Thinris, yep. a new Nayslayer uh, unit leader. Uh, he's available till October 19th, and the VIP model for the main Mini Crate line is the Trancer Dancer, available till February 19th. Uh, for those of you that are Legend of the Five Rings fans, you are days away from Asawa Tadaka rotating out on yeah, the 5th. Close. Yeah, October 5th is when Asawa is going out. Uh, the VIP model is still Sadako of the Scorpion Clan, but uh, November 5th is when Sadako is going to rotate. Yeah. And then for the Savage Mini Crate, for those Robert E. Howard fans, uh, Belit is the newest model available until, to order until October 12th. Mm -hmm. And King Conan on the throne, still available until January. Yeah, 12th. you got a while on, on Conan on the throne still. Yep. So, uh, Jukto in Twitch chat says the new recruiting studio is a bit echoey. So, for those of you who it didn't know, we moved. We, we did. Moved. You can't tell from, the, from the anything. No. Everything has been, has been rearranged, green screen, all that kind of stuff. Still a green screen. But yeah, this room is three times bigger with no carpeting. 
So we are uh, we're in the process of, if you've followed us on, on other social media, you've seen Jeff posting pictures yep. of boxes in the warehouse and minis, Tony and Jordan putting minis in the cases and stuff. So as we get everything else sorted out in the building, some things are a bigger priority like getting models released and shipped and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We are going to get some soundproofing options for in here. Yes. But we'll Tony's in the, in the midst of researching them. He might be doing it right now. Yeah, Tony, are you yeah. running the stream or are you just looking up like those cool like <gasps> foam wedges? Yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, he's looking up foam wedges right now. That, everyone, by the way, uh, Tony Konacek, video producer, best mm -hmm. human being, works at Privateer Brass by far. If you ever uh -huh. see him at a show, don't yeah. touch him, don't shake his hand, he doesn't like that. But uh, just wave at him from a comfortable distance and give him a thumbs up. Let him know that you love him because mm -hmm. we love him. Right, Tony? High fives. <laughs> Tony, says, Tony says high fives. Uh, one other thing I want to want to bring up real quick, because we talked about how we're going to do a War Machine battle report here in a couple of weeks, and we're mm -hmm. going to do an Oblivion uh, scenario. Uh, if you're interested in the Oblivion narrative campaign, which there's a lot of people out there playing it, uh, yeah. our, our friends at Chain Attack recently did an entire series. They played through the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, and they did a full podcast series on... Yep. The, the narrative campaign. So if you want to go check it out, you can go to the link on the screen right now. Uh, listen to it. And I don't know if Jay, Jay's team won or not. I don't know how Jay did. I haven't listened yeah, to it myself. I haven't listened to the whole series. But, uh, you know, Jay, first ever Iron Gauntlet world champion. First ever War Machine and Hordes world champion. Mm -hmm. He probably did okay. He probably did okay. He might I don't know. Fine. Maybe maybe something weird happened. Those Omen cards can change up how the games go. Yeah. And maybe his opponent played, you know, an Omen card and it... Swung everything in a weird way, and, and he lost. Screw Fuzzle in Twitch oh, chat. Oh, Screw Fuzzle. So, yeah, it's 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 a name. Mm -hmm. Screw Fuzzle said, "By the way, I did the Chain Attack podcast. It was good. Well, it's settled then. Yeah, we have the Screw Fuzzle seal of approval. Mm -hmm. So go check it out. So mm -hmm. today we want to talk about two things: the October releases. Yes, uh, coming out for War Machine for the the first half and the second half. Mm -hmm. Uh, show you the finished cards on some that I don't know that everyone's seen them yet. Yeah, I, these cards I don't believe have been made public yeah. yet. And uh, then we're going to do a, a quick WTC recap, show some photos of the event, and talk about the lists of the team that won. Mm -hmm. So let's get right into what's coming to your local store this month. So on October 11th, which is what? Not this Friday, but next Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see... Continuing Infernal releases, uh, Agathon, Zadaroth, and uh, Orin were yeah. all dropping. Now, these models, people have seen them. The rules have been in War yeah. Room for quite some yeah. time. Zadaroth was in the... Uh, starter box. Starter box, yeah. the army box. So that model's been available, but now this is the, the individual release of Zadaroth. Mm -hmm. So if you are um, have your Infernal's army and you're looking to add more to it, or you're considering getting into Infernal's, maybe you didn't want to pick up the army box, maybe you can't find it anymore... Uh, this is how you're going to get Or you just off. want that model to do some like experimental paint jobs and that kind of stuff. Like if you're a painter and, and you want that model and you didn't want to buy the entire army box for it, yes. she's got some really interesting smoke stuff going on and the octopus. Yeah, she's got the octopus. She's got the octopus. She doesn't yeah. have the whispery guy. No. Yeah. Sometimes I get the two of those mixed up. Well, but they, yeah. They've got weird names, right? Yeah. They Agathon and Zadaroth and Omodemos. Yeah. Not like Bill and... You know, Jimmy the Destroyer. <laughs> Jimmy the Destroyer. Jimmy the Destroyer. Uh, also, next week, uh, and we talked about this on the Battle Report yesterday, um, the beginning of Wave 2 for Riot Quest is, is mm -hmm. coming. So uh, Captain Crawtooth, the Wolf with No Name, and Orsus the Unchained are all hitting stores. Uh, we've shown their Riot Quest cards plenty of times. Um, they'll all come with their hero card and their gear card inside. Yep. And obviously those are going to be playable in War Machine and Hordes as well. We don't yep. have the War Machine and Hordes cards to show you now, but we have previewed them in the past. Yep. Not a much has changed since you last saw them. Like the Butcher, originally his sort of stumble move was a move. Now it's a push so that he doesn't take free strikes from it and things like that. Yeah. Uh, things that people saw and were kind of obvious because we showed those while they were still in testing. But yeah. um, if you are a Riot Quest fan or you just want to get those models for War Machine, uh, one week from Friday, so you can go pre-order those now, and I would recommend pre-ordering those. Yeah. Uh, Riot Quest has been doing very well, and we've had a couple sellouts here yeah. and there. So more stuff's being made, more stuff's going out well, there. And, and a model like the Butcher has all that history and popularity, yeah. so it's 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 completely possible a lot more people might buy the Butcher model because they like the Butcher as a character so much. And no one's ever seen him unarmored until yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, he was the first War Machine model. He was. Back in, what, 2003? Two or three, yeah. yeah. Yeah, way back then. 
Uh, but the cards we do want to show you and sort of talk about is everything coming out in the second half of October, mm -hmm. which is the October 25th releases. Uh, and that's going to be a, a big month, not just for War Machine. There's also a bunch of Monster Apocalypse hitting stores that, that week as well. Mm -hmm. So let's start with what you're going to see hitting stores and show you their final cards. I'm going to flip these over like I'm doing a news broadcast. Oh. Yeah. So first off, Alexia the Undying. Alexia is going to be in stores. Yep. Alexia is mostly unchanged from how you remember her back in yeah. CID. Um, if you're playing with Legion of Lost Souls, she is, I don't want to say yeah. auto-include, but like if you're deciding yeah. to build an army that has the Legion of Lost Souls, you want Alexia 3. Yeah. And the Legion's coming out a little later than her, but there's other undead stuff you can, you can have with her, I believe. <laughs> I'm trying the, to remember. The, the confidence. I've just played so many games with, the, with her and the Legion that I'm trying to think of other combinations, but Legion of Lost Souls is coming a little later in the schedule. Yeah. And yeah. that's the main use for it, yeah. right? Uh, so Alexia is going to be dropping. Uh, addition next, afterwards, if uh, those of you looking to start your Order of Elimination armies, if you're going to be playing Flames in the Darkness, uh, Grandmaster Gabriel Throne. Grandmaster Gabriel, Gabriel Throne. Throne. You got it almost, almost right. It's a little weird. It's a long... I always want to call him Thorn instead of Throne because it's just some reason. Yeah. But so yeah, uh, the, the leader of the Order of Elimination on his horse with his pistol that hates... Everything. Yeah, his <laughs> don't be soulless or undead. Yeah. Uh, again, this is a real centerpiece model, a real whole linchpin of the forces. If you're mm -hmm. playing anything with a lot of Morrowinds in it, particularly if you're playing Flames in the Darkness, yep. you're going to want Gabriel Throne. Tactician is just too strong of an ability to pass up on. Well, and those uh, battle plans can come in really handy. Yeah, it, the battle plans come incredibly handy, and honestly, for seven points, he's, he's I don't want to say he's a steal. I mean, you're not getting him for free. He's yeah. also not, like, vastly undercosted. He's not two points. Yeah. But for seven points, this is your, your, your Markov, your, you know, that style mm -hmm. of, he's not a Dragoon, but he's the, the, that mm -hmm. style of, like, Cav leader that hangs back. And he is the anti-Valon Hawk, in my opinion. Like, Infernals came yeah. out, and they got Valon. Order yeah. of Elimination comes out, they get Gabriel thrown. Yeah. And um, there's a question about these being in War Room, and on the release dates, we make things live in War Room. Yeah. So sometimes things are live in War Room way, way early because of a convention, but if there's no convention around their release, then we, we push the button to make them live, usually the day of or right before the day before. Yes. So yeah, the, all these things are, are going to be in War Room, and um, a bunch of... The, all the Infernal models got put on the card database, but this stuff will also get put on the card database around its release date. Sometimes there's other website issues that need to get dealt with the morning of or whatever. But yeah, all that stuff will be live in all the digital formats as soon as possible. Uh, Doug Seacat has joined us in Twitch chat and said that uh, Gabriel Throne is one of Doug's favorite characters uh, in the Oblivion mm -hmm. book. So uh, if you want to play one of Doug Seacat's favorite characters, yep. uh, you play Gabriel Throne. I've actually been tempted to play... Uh, a Flames in the Darkness list? I think uh, now that there's a bunch of Morrow and stuff, because I always liked Blaze and the Knights, mm -hmm. but there wasn't enough to really flesh out an entire Morrow and Right. Army. But you now had, you that had this Harlan Versch, Blaze, yeah, and yeah. As this stuff starts rolling out and releasing with the Resolutes and the Vigilance and other stuff, it's going to be totally possible to play an entirely Morrow and Army. Yes. It's going to be pretty awesome. And I, I considered it for a second, and then I realized I instead just wanted to add two Primal Archons to my Barnabas 2 list and just mm -hmm. play. Barnabas 2 harder. Mm -hmm. So Barnabas 2, 2, the Barnabas Inc. Mm -hmm. It's the sequel. Those things are really good, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Order of Elimination, Order of Elimination Vigilance are dropping. Now, these are not yeah. the, the big heavy Yeah, the ones. Resolutes are the big guys. These are like the Hunters. They're, they're a lighter ar armored unit. They're small. They're Monster Hunters. Model count-wise, they're small. Yeah. yeah. They're, but they're Monster Hunters. They're, they're, they're Monster Hunters, right? So you're looking at a three or five person unit. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very cheap. Uh, and when Cormier, is Cormier, Cormier out yet? I don't remember. Uh, I feel like, I don't I feel like, think she is. We've solicited her, but she's not out yet. So when she comes out, she yeah. also gives them a uh, true sight. Yeah. Uh, so she's going to be another great support solo whenever she drops. But I mean, these remind me, they're like, they're not quite exemplar errants, but they're just a good forward unit to go forward, harass, yeah. hold a zone, and just be annoying. I mean, AD Pathfinder Stealth. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 1412, so like they are going to get just blown up to, yeah, to AOEs. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna die easy if you manage to hit them. But you have to, your opponent has to go send something to deal with them, and if they don't take them all out, like they've got gang, they've got Palpus Strength 11, great swords that are blessed and magical, like mm -hmm. they will do damage, yeah. right? 
And yeah. to me, whereas the the resolutes are your you're marching up the field with them, they're the heavy hitters. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna hold the zones. The vigilants are going to contest and or harass mm -hmm. and or maybe even get around behind and start picking off support pieces. Yeah. Uh, so I think if you're playing the the Morrowind army, this is a a solid addition. One maybe two units. Uh, do we have any questions? I see like chat's got a bunch of questions. Somebody's asked about bringing donut holes. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what that's about, but I do love donut holes. Well, they were they were talking about bringing Timbits to lock and load. I, I oh bought, yeah, I bought Timbits when I was in Canada last a couple weeks ago. It was uh, amazing. John Galvin says no changes to Crawtooth rules for War Machine. No, I'm, in fact, I have those printed out in front of me. We yeah. didn't have the card to show, but uh, Crawtooth uh, costs five eight damage boxes. Stat line like you saw before has snacking, has no sleeping on the job. Gatorman has the chain weapon with drag and thrown. Uh, has the hook strike and the bite, everything that you're seeing. Yeah. It works for Crick, Circle, Legion, Scorn, and Troll Bloods. Mm -hmm. Is a mercenary minion, privateer, gator man. Uh, Wolf of No Name, pretty much how we originally showed him. Yeah, and I think the, we, we, I don't remember when we showed him versus the changes to his gun range and stuff. Yeah, but, his, his gun, his gun yeah. went from, it used to range be. Range 10 to 12. Yeah, it's at 12 now, but I think we yeah. showed it when it was a 12. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Uh, and then the main change to Butcher was that, uh, let me look up the name of the ability because it is a uh, bloodbath. Bloodbath, when you get hit, he wanders in a direction and then mm -hmm. he gets to attack. Previously, it was a move. Now it's a push so that you mm -hmm. can't hit him, make him walk away from you, and then free strike then him on the way him. out yeah. because that's dumb. Mm -hmm. and we don't want that happening. Yeah. Uh, quad zero one, quad zero U says no crawtooth benefits for privateers aside from working for them and basically just being a combat solo in privateers. No. No. Um, Privateers already have a wealth of solos that buff them. Yeah. So Crawtooth is just objectively stronger in Gatorman because he has a thing that benefits them. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. in Privateers, he's a fun addition. He's a, a, a combat solo you could add. But of the Riot Quest models that came out recently, if you're looking to add something to Privateers, I think you reach for Bella first yeah. for Privateers. And then Crawtooth second. Mm -hmm. So uh, JP Great One asked if there are spoilers for the remaining Archons. I think we might have that handled. Yeah, we're actually we're right getting to, we're getting to that right now. So <laughs> let's go back to the, the the rest of the models coming out for the yeah. rest of the month. So we did uh, Alexia, we did Gabriel Throne, we just covered we just the order of the yeah. So let's take a look at the the final card for the Thamorite Archon. Yeah, now that's a lot, a lot of text. But that's I don't I think the Void might have more text, but that's the, why. <laughs> Uh, actually, I think, no, I think Tham have them side by side, and because of the amount of text on the three attack types on the Thamorite, yeah, I think maybe. Thamorite has the Void beaten. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happens when you create the di Divine Manifestation of the best archer? Mm -hmm. You get a Thamorite Archon. Yeah. Uh, beloved of Thamar yeah. is an obscene <laughs> ability. And, you know, uh, for those of you that may not be able to read it on your screen right now, when a friendly Thamorite model in this model's command range, which is 10, Misses an attack roll, can reroll that attack roll. Each attack roll can be rerolled once. But the beloved of Thamar can trigger on every Thamorite you've got. Yes. Now, now to balance that out, there aren't a lot of Thamorites in the game. But there's been more. But there, we, we did add Thamorite to a couple of things. Black and then Bell the, is a Thamorite. I know. And then the Advocate and Black Bell are coming out. So there's a few. But it's not like this is going to affect your entire army. Because I believe, except for the Advocate, almost every Thamorite is a character. Uh, I, I believe so, yes. Yeah. So, so it's not like the Marwan army that's going to have Vigilance and Resolutes and, and I mean, you if know, you take this thing, stuff. on top of it murdering the world with its D3 shots that are PAL-14 and have these attack types like uh -huh. you know, Thamar's Teeth, Death Driver, Eruption of Ash on a D3 shot, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. um, if you literally run Fiona and Bella, let's just say those are the only two yeah, Thamorites yeah, 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 in the yeah. list for whatever reason. Um, Giving those two rerolls, just being within 10 inches of this thing, and this thing's going to go where it wants. Because oh, not only yeah. has it got flight, it's got it's parry. Speed 7 flight with parry. Yeah. It's going to go where it wants. Uh, super strong model. Mm -hmm. Very powerful model. Like all the Archons, expecting to see some of these hit the yeah. table. But it has maybe the lowest hit points of any of the Archons. It's only got 10, and like the Primal's got 18. Mm -hmm. And some of yeah. the other ones have, have 12 or 14. But, so. I mean, to make up for that, it is def 16, arm 17. Yeah. And it's got dodge, so yeah. if you do happen to charge it in, charge a few people into it, one of them whiffs, it's just out of there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that'll be coming out end of this month. And then the last War Machine release for the end of this month is the Void Archon, the much anticipated the best Archon, Void Archon. It's my favorite because it's so weird. It is visually weird. and everything else. It and who who does it even 
Who is even listened to? What God is even following? They don't know. They don't know where it came from. I mean, it's part shadowy, part mechanical. It's like could be serious. Could be a dead elf god. Who knows? Uh, Robert E. Mitchell says, "Does beloved work with Fiona's cultists?" Uh, I had to look at the text because there's so many models to look up. But I I don't remember if it if it makes them samurites. I think it does. I think it. If it makes them samurites, then yes, it works. If it doesn't. Uh, Julian, what's up with the CID page? Uh, there's some tech stuff going on. They're fixing it. Don't worry. The CID page isn't going to explode. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Miller, before we go on the Void Archive, what themes does Butcher 4 go into? He is a Doom Reaver solo. So yeah. He's, he works he's, for wolves. He's a Kador solo that's got Doom Reaver. So he works just like any other Doom Reaver solo. Yep. So... Back to the Void Archon, which mm-hmm. I expect to see a fair amount of yeah. in the lists that can run this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Entropic Force and Dark Shroud alone is a very powerful combo on something that is this tough, 14, 17, mm-hmm. 12 boxes. You speed six in flight. It's got divine manifestation like always. Yeah. But uh, on top of that, you know, it can just teleport wherever the hell it wants to uh, mm-hmm. with Void Walk, and that triggers off any attack, not just melee attacks. Yeah. So you can walk up with a Void Howler, which is spray 10, pal 14, spray some people, and then either teleport like away to be yeah. safe, or go up, spray, and then teleport in yeah. to be able to trigger... Uh, the, the Dark Shroud and the Tropic Force where you want it to be. Mm-hmm. On top of that, the, the gaining soul tokens to either get incorporeal or to, to boost, there's just, this is like a total package Archon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's obviously built around debuffing. Yeah. Uh, and it's built around, it's not protecting anybody. Yeah. Right, yeah, like yeah, the other ones. Not. Yeah, but even though it's kind of supporting debuffy, you can never ignore a Spray 10, Pal 14 yeah. attack. Like, the, the number of angles you can get with that much reach well, it's, on a spray is... It's is, scarier because it has dual attack. Yeah, that too. And so it charges in, right? Mm-hmm. Bops somebody. Mm-hmm. Sprays. Bops somebody, teleport sprays. Yeah, I mean, if you've got options. You could yeah. charge somebody, bop somebody, spray somebody, kill them, and then teleport back. Or charge, bop, teleport, spray. Mm-hmm. Or spray, teleport, bop. Your bopping in options are endless. I don't with think this it's thing. bop. I think it's boops. No, because this thing doesn't touch. Boop. It's called a touch. No, they're boops. Boops are when you just sort of like boop on somebody's uh, on somebody's nose. Bops is when you're out to kill them. Maybe he doesn't mean to kill people. Maybe he's just booping noses and they're just exploding. No, this thing wants to kill people. It's got dark shroud and entropic force. It's like antithesis to life. It sucks up souls. Maybe, Nothing about this is nice. Maybe it just wants hugs and it doesn't know that it's a murder monster. It can happen. I mean, it can happen. Yeah, sounds good. But yeah, there's your Void Archon. So that is the last of the Archons because the Primal was pre-released. And, uh, or was Dunia? Is Dunia the last no, one? No, Dunia, Dunia has not come out okay, yet. Okay, so we, uh, Dunia is releasing, I, I don't know if it's November or December. But, uh, but Dunia, we'll preview Dunia is not out this month. Uh, for those of you, I see Dunia popping up in the chat mm-hmm. right now. And what we were covering was everything coming out in October. Yes. So we will cover the Dunia card uh, closer to the release of that yep. model. Um, so that's all the stuff coming up for October. Oh, but before we do that, I want to do a quick rundown because uh, I know we have lots of people that watch the shows when we talk about Monster Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I just want to do, if you're going to your store on October 25th for the War Machine stuff and you have any Monpoc fans, there's a, there's a lot coming out that month as well. Gorgajatron of Ubercor, White Dijon of Empire of the Apes, Ulgoth of Lords yeah. of Cthulhu, uh, the Snatcher, Elite Snatcher Hellion Blister for Lords of Cthulhu, the Ape Bomber Command Ape, Mm-hmm. Uh, Empire of the Ape unit, and then the Isle of Annihilation uh, neoprene mat. Yeah. All of that drops on October 25th in stores as well. Mm-hmm. So we've got just a ton. It's, it's a little lighter at the front of the month with uh, Infernals and then the Riot yeah. Quest releases. Yeah. And then it's Archons, Order of Illumination, and then a ton of Monpoc at the end of the month. Yeah. So if you're interested in any of that, which I hope you are, and that's probably why you're watching, go pre order with your local store and let them know you need copies. Yeah, and someone is asking what themes the Void Archon can be used in. I do not remember that off the top of my head. We added the Void Archon to some themes in Oblivion, but I don't remember which ones they were. Yeah. And also, keep in mind, it's a Scorn minion. So it works for, for War Machine and Hordes. Yeah. I, we went through so many iterations that I'm definitely at the yeah. point that I like to have the final rules up in front of me yeah. or my rules yeah, yeah. database, unless it's, it's something I just I'm almost absolutely know by heart. It's in the Scorn theme that deals with souls and stuff like the infernal theme or whatever yeah but i can't remember off the top of my head and i don't want to try and 
Yes. Like, I'm pretty sure it can be taken in Clockwork Legions, for example, so I expect to see yeah. a lot of Convergence players taking it. But again, yeah. want to have the final rules in front mm -hmm. of me because, uh, spoiler alert, don't have everything memorized. It's, it's a little big. I used to. Every single I used thing to. Now it's memorized. definitely like, okay, let me, let me double check. Mm -hmm. uh, so, moving on from new releases. Yeah. The WTC just ended. Yep. Uh, the World Team Championship, which was held, it's been held, uh, I forget which year this is, but it's been going on for many years now, and it's one of the biggest and most prestigious War Machine tournaments around. Yeah. Completely community-driven, community-started. Yeah, yeah and oh. since it's in Europe, it draws from a lot of countries that are easier to get to than yes. people. Like, a lot of people do travel to lock and load from Australia and some people in Europe and stuff, but the WCC being in Europe, it's a lot easier for a bunch of people. So there's a, there's a lot of countries represented there that don't, don't show up in American cons. Yeah, and it's, it's really cool to see sort of everyone come together and play yeah. in a, a, a team event. Uh, this is a uh, five-person teams uh, with captains, uh, uh, a pairing selection, and then they face off. Mm -hmm. And there was just a ton of teams, like you said. Uh, you know, many countries had multiple teams. America yep. had, what, three? I, yeah, three. Uh, but... Before we, we, we want to show you some cool photos that the community sent us in mm -hmm. of the event and then congratulate uh, the winners. But we also want to talk about the winners' lists. For those yeah. of you that might not have seen them or heard what they were playing, I'm going to pull them up on my phone here. Uh, and so, you know, congratulations to the team Norway Munin, mm -hmm. uh, who yeah. won the WTC overall. I believe they faced Poland. Yeah, in we, the got a picture, we got a picture of that final table, of those final table teams of Poland and oh, Norway. Oh, there we are. Munin. It was, uh, it was Hugen and Munin, right, where the Norway teams? I, I'm I, believe Hugen, I believe it was Hugen and Munin. It, which, would, it would be weird to not do one of them and do the other one. Which were Odin's Ravens? Yeah, those are Odin's Ravens, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It would be strange to do one and not the other. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, there we see the, the, the two teams in the, the finals. Uh, heard nothing but really fun stuff from yeah. the event. Yeah. But, so, you know, massive, massive congratulations to, to Team Norway Munin and just Norway in general for, mm -hmm. for winning the WTC this year. And... Uh, having what looked like pretty tough competition the yeah. whole way up. I don't think it was a smooth ride in any way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. the Americans were in like the top five, I, I believe, one of the American teams. Man, was. I hope so. I can't remember. I saw, I saw somebody posted on Twitter. Maybe it was Jay. They better else. represent. It, it's all this about, is my sassy post. Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, it's all about having fun. Be as good or as bad as you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag just Oz things. Yeah. 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 Uh, so... Uh, real fast, let's let's go through what they play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're we're gonna go through this pretty quick so we can get to the the mm -hmm. photos. So uh, Christian was playing Protectorate. He was playing Faithful Masses and Warriors of the Old Faith. So it's cool to see Warriors of the Old Faith. Yeah, uh, his Faithful Masses list was a Serenia led list. Uh, we're looking at double champions, double uh, allegiance, three units of initiates. Uh, had the Covenant. Had a pair of Menite Archons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can uh, go find all these lists, by the way, on uh, Conflict Chamber. Uh, if you do a search for Conflict Chamber WTC 2019, mm -hmm. it'll go to the event. You can see everybody's lists. But what I'm looking at is like some of the new stuff that got played. And it was double Midnight Archon in this list yeah. was, was really, really cool to see. His second list was running Warriors of the Old Faith. I'm just going to read this list out verbatim. Okay. Because I, Warriors of the Old Faith, it's a weird theme force. It's all, all the horses that Minoth cares about. It's a weird theme force, yeah. but it's cool. <laughs> Uh, and obviously, it can compete and is viable in a, in tournament play. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Vlad three list with adjudicator as his own only jack, which no surprises there. We we've yeah. been talking about Vlad three with adjudicator for for yeah. some time. Uh, double champion of the Order of the Wall, Fenris, Hand of Silence, Hermit of Hingehold. Surprise! There were a few hermits at the WTC. Couple, a couple, a few, uh, six I think, but maybe a few more. Uh, High Paladin Vilman. Mm -hmm. uh, Man of War Dracoon, Double Midnight Archon, Yuri the Axe, and Minimum Choir, and then a unit of the Initiates of the Order of the Wall. So two units, I love totaling that, seven models. I love that Yuri's in there, because it's mostly like, you know, Midnight stuff, and then Yuri's just this weird murderer hiding in the bushes. Yeah. yeah. But I love that it's uh, seven models across two, two units, and then everything else is just powerhouse solos backed by Vlad III. Yeah. Like, this list... Um, I believe its plan is run directly at face, <laughs> smash into face, be backed up by Vlad. Repeat, smashing. Murder face. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy <laughs> Talisi says, have you spoiled Butcher Force stat line def and armor? Uh, you know what? I'll do that real fast before we, we move on to the next we, one. We already did. No, we didn't tell him the stat line. They don't know the stat line. It, he was previewed like 
a month ago. They saw everything but his stat line. They, oh, didn't, they didn't, didn't see this. Him. Oh, you didn't tell him this time. They didn't know that he cost seven. He's got 10 damage boxes. Uh, that he's got carapace. They knew he has carapace. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's def 14, arm 15. So he becomes def 14, arm yeah. 19. He's mat eight, like you would expect. Uh, he's mat nine. Oh, he's mat nine. You were yeah. moving the, the page. He's so. mat nine. Speed mat five, mat nine. nine. Strength eight. Command one. Command one. Yeah, not that it's worth anything. Uh, so carrying on with the, the winning list for the WTC, our next player was uh, Juan. And Juan was mm -hmm. playing Grimkin. Mm -hmm. uh, he was playing a Dark Menagerie list that had one, two, three, four Clockatrices. Yeah. And a Dark Menagerie list. Uh, first one was led by the Dreamer. Second one was led by the Child. And it had one, two, three, four, five Clockatrices. Mm -hmm. So uh, two very similar lists. Both had four free Gremlin Swarms. Both had the Hermit of Hengehold. Uh, one had a Death Knell. The other one didn't. But they were both Dark Menagerie. Yeah. Uh, they were both mainly Clock Spam. Just one was being run by the child, and one was being run by the dreamer. I imagine they probably played the dreamer one most, but who knows? Uh, Someone knows. K Kuba, I believe, is the way to pronounce their name. It's K U. I'm, I'm going to let you butcher all the names. K U B A. So Kuba uh, also played Protectorate. Played uh, Creators Might list run by Krios One. So Kuba, I hope you're saying your name right. More power to you, Krios One. People have been sleeping on Krios 1 for quite some time. And Krios yeah. 1 is legitimately amazing. It has been since day one. Yeah. Uh, it's Krios 1 with Adjudicator, a uh, pair of Exemplar Borders, Elias Gade, Hermit, dual Midnight Archons. Apparently the Midnight Archons. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to Turns out they're pretty good. If you're going to run a Protectorate list and you want combat solos. Uh, he had Severius Zero with yeah. a pair of Redeemers on him. A Vassal Mechanic, uh, a Min Choir, a Min Unit of Press Gangers. Uh, oh. And then he had Roven and the Honor Guard. Well, press gangers press ambush. Gangers are, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so when you just need to contest a zone, yeah, you, you just be like, want some sure, yeah. I'll spend uh, seven points yeah. to just say that you don't get that zone. Mm -hmm. uh, second list was a, Har a Harvey One list: uh, Triple Crusader, Sanctifier, Hierophant, and then Double Allegiant, Double or uh, Champion of the Order of the Wall, Hand of Silence, Double Midnight Archon, three units of Initiates of the Wall, and then support pieces like Vassal Mechanics and Choirs and stuff like that. Just another tough, beefy list of a lot of multi-wound models that can yeah. get in your face very quickly and, and do a lot of damage. Uh, quad Zero One, Quad Zero U says, any interest in curbing clock spam or still evaluating? We're definitely paying attention to everything yeah. that's happening. In there the was meta. a question earlier about the next dynamic update and if it's going to be a time frame. And we don't promise time frames on. I mean, I'll updates. tell you that those conversations are happening right now. <clears throat> but yeah, now. we're having those conversations. And and part of that question in the comments was, we we've talked about Oblivion Errata, and that's going to be part of the next dynamic update. So we're we're working on figuring out everything that needs to go in that dynamic update and mm -hmm. the timing of it and if we need to test anything internally and that kind of stuff. Yep. We're not going to promise it's going to happen at a particular time, but know that we're keeping it in mind and we're not going to go like five months without doing a dynamic update. Yep. Also, since we paused, Alex Barker asked if there's going to be player sheets for Oblivion campaigns on the website. Yeah. We did that like Monday, I believe. If you go to privateerpress.com slash rules, which is also organized play slash whatever. Um, there's a few different ways to get to it. At the top, mm. there is a, a gateway to Oblivion link, and that is the PDF that, that you were told you could photocopy from the Oblivion book. Yeah. That is that um, white background image for you to use to track your Oblivion stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um, and Alex Barker says, any chance we'll see a change log or dev notes on the Oblivion update? Uh, that's stuff that we're all talking about right now. Oh, yeah, we always do dev notes slash change log on every dynamic update. So yeah, expect the next time well, we do one to see that kind of thing. Because small spoiler, when the next dynamic, up, the next balance update occurs, uh, it's going to include the errata for the Oblivion book. Yeah, there are yeah, stuff in yeah. the book that was typos that was wrong, and that's a big part of it is catching all that stuff that happened mm -hmm. and then putting it in the balance update along with other changes that we are reviewing and determining if we're going to make or not. Yeah. So let's carry on, shall we? With, carry on. Uh, player four, Martin. Martin. Tony, 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 slide that window over a little bit so we can see what that other, the other emote was. What's happening? Tony's putting the link to the emote. Um, pull back yeah. in there, but we still don't know what that. You, when you went to the list as you were reading it, should be Ashlyn. I said should be Eris. Yeah, should be Eris was the one you missed. Yeah, because you said Steamroller Masters logo should be Ashlyn, and then Tony moved it before you said should be Eris. 
uh, Mopac Donut Factory, RideQuest, LootCoin, or RideQuest Detra. Yep. So, I mean, definitely. that's what we're voting on right now for when we get our 65th person and we get another emoji unlock, mm -hmm. or however many more emoji unlocks. We're trying to just determine what that one is. Yeah. And it should be the Donut Factory, obviously. Obviously. No, it should be the Loot Token. Uh, no, Donut <laughs> Factory. I'm no. going gonna, gonna to keep reading this list real yeah, fast. Yeah, keep reading those lists. Uh, so Martin brought Legion. He played yeah. Ravens of War and Primal Terrors, two lists that could not be more different than what he was mm -hmm. playing. So he played yeah. uh, Abbey 2 with Go Lab. looks like six Harriers, six Shredders, Proteus, and a Seraph. He had the Hermit of Hinchhold. That's a lot of lessers. That's Hell yeah, lot. it's a lot of lessers. That's a lot of lessers. Uh, I mean, it's, it's Abbey 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, he had a Forsaken and a pair of Hellmouths. So just... All the beasts ever mm -hmm. versus his Primal Terrors list, which was Callus One, a Blightbringer, Amok, Double Spell Martyr, uh, Min uh, Warmongers with Gorag, Min Blightwings or Rotwings, a max unit of uh, Rotwings, two maximum units of Chosen, and two Hellmouths. So, mm -hmm. kind of the standard. Uh, yeah. Primal Terrors list we see. Yeah. Like those lists are, there's a, there's a little bit of variation. They almost all start with uh, Blightbringer. Mm hmm. Two units of chosen, and then callus typically. Yeah, usually, yeah. Uh, there's a unit of rot wings, and then maybe maybe two. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends. Yeah. And then the, you kind of get some wiggle room. Like most people bring warmongers. Uh, sometimes you see war spears. Yeah. Uh, Hellmouths. Sorry. The list begins with two units of chosen, two hellmouths. Yeah. Uh, and then it, and then it goes for and a blightbringer, and then it goes from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but so. Pretty much what we've been seeing, but it's a very effective list. And, you know, that was the Boogeyman, what, a uh, year ago? Well, at, was it? It was the Boogeyman before Tharn. And at Lock and Load, I think that I commentated on a live stream where Jake was playing a list a lot like that. Yeah. With the, the birds to get out there and, and clog up your opponent and then pop the feet for Callus's. No, wait, is Callus 2 or Callus 1? Because Jake was running Callus 1. Because he had all the... No, it's Callus 1. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he had all the incubi popping out of the birds. No, Callus so, 1 is absurd with these Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, be I believe that was lock and load. Uh, I no, I think I commented on that game at War Machine Weekend last I, year. But maybe you did it with lock and load I, too. Yeah, I, I, I know I commentated on it, and it wasn't the one I did at War Machine Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last uh, winning uh, member of the team, uh, Zvere. S V E R R E. I'm gonna go with Sphere, cause sure. that sounds right, right, Tony? Sounds good to me. Tony says it's good. It's good. Sphere. We need to find. By the way, Tony, we need to find one of those websites that like pronounces words for you, and then wire that in so that we can just pause and Tony can have the robot read the word like it's one of those I will like, just, GPS things. I'll just type the word succulent into it and just spam yeah, the button. Yeah, sure. That could also happen. He was playing Rhett. Uh, yeah. So Sphere's playing Rhett. He was playing a Defenders and a Legions of Dawn mm -hmm. list. Uh, his Defenders list with Gareth 2. Scary Gary has become definitely a thing in the meta for the Rhett players. Uh, running Banshee, Double Harpy, Moros, uh, Silas. Had uh, two mechanics. Uh, Eris 1, Fane Knight, Scareth, Isian. Yeah. Uh, two Ghost Snipers, which were... Uh, Eris and his two Ghost Snipers were his Rhett uh, requisition options. He had the Heavy Rifle team. Good to see that yeah. thing. Uh, he had a unit of Electromancers, or Electromancers if you want to say it wrong, with a Solus Escort on it, uh, one AFG, and one Trident. Yeah. His second list had double Trident in though. It was a Legion's list run by Assyria, uh, Imperatus, Phoenix, uh, Chimera, two Mechanics, two Ghost Snipers, Hermit, mm -hmm. uh, House Shail Artificer, had a maximum unit of Sentinels with the UA with an Escort, and then double yeah. Trident. Yeah. So... Uh, that's the lists. Again, if you want to go look at all the lists that were played in WTC and you want to go look at the, the winning lists, uh, if you do a Google search for Conflict Chamber WC 2019, it'll, it'll bring up all the validated lists and you can go take a look at everything. There's a lot of really interesting things in there. And I haven't been able to fact check it myself, but I heard a statistic from somebody that every model in the game, except for one, and I don't know which one it was, but every Sturges model... Two. I don't know. They said every model in the game was represented at WTC. So but someone, I, I so haven't been able to fact check it. That to know means that someone was playing Sturges? That's the thing. Was somebody playing Sturges 1, Sturges 2? Yeah. Was somebody playing uh, Cossack Woodsman? Was somebody playing, you know, just even like some of the, the, the off meta things you don't normally see, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like, was there a high shield UA at the WTC? 
not a bad mo model, just off meta. You don't see a ton yeah, of it. And, yeah. and, and WTC is known as being a super competitive event. So you expect to see yeah. what the current meta is, but because there's enough people showing off, there's got to be people showing up doing dark horse stuff and, and, well, and having off meta choices. And also, you, you sometimes get teams that are coming from countries where they don't play a lot, and they're just going to experience a War Machine event. Like a couple years ago, there was a team from China and some of them didn't even really know how to play War Machine that well, but they wanted to come to the WCC and be part of a War yeah. Machine event. So you never know, those, those people that have those top tier meta-defining lists mm -hmm. aren't the only people at these kind of events. No, yeah. but again, that's not been fact-checked. That's just something that somebody yeah. was talking about online and I haven't had a chance to, so that, that could be wildly untrue, yep. but we don't know, we don't know. So uh, moving on from the winning lists and uh, we want to show some of the photos that were sent to yep. us from the community. Photos by the community uh, of the event. So Tony, let's queue up some of the photos. First off, this was the, uh, the player talk, like the judge yeah, talk to the yeah. players. So here we just see like, this doesn't even catch nearly everybody in the photo. Yeah. Just the wide collection of players from all across the globe getting together and listening to the, the judges chit chat about yep. general rules and organization and everything yeah. going on. Uh, and that's always like the best time to get group shots is when you have oh, the yeah, judge talk yeah, to the start everybody's, of the show. Everybody's within earshot of the judges. Yeah. Uh, next up, I think we have a photo of Team Sweden. Yeah, Team Sweden uh, just getting a game in and just looking at, you know, some yeah. of the various... And you can see how the teams are all laid, laid out on yeah. a, single, a single row versus another team all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to tell exactly what kind of terrain and models they're playing there, but I just thought that was a cool shot to show what you would see yeah. at a WCTC table, one yeah. team versus the other team, but everybody playing their 1v1 games, mm -hmm. for people that might not be familiar yeah. with it. Uh, we have another game shot coming up that's some Americans. Yeah, that's uh, Jason, Jason Watt and JVM from uh, Team America East. And I don't know uh, who, the, I can't recognize the people that are farther back along there. Uh, I can't see because it's kind of funny. Mike, yeah. Mike Perrier. I know Mike Perrier was on their team, but I yeah. don't see who else yeah. is, is back there. Wasn't Tom Juan on their team too? Uh, Tom was on one of the American teams. Yeah, I, think, think, I, I think I don't remember which one. I think Tom was on. Uh, Tom was on all the American teams. Tom was on all the American teams <laughs> and, and all the Australian, Australian teams. teams. <laughs> That's possibly his hair right that there. Could be, the that could be. That could be. That does look like the top of Tom Juan's nugget. Yeah, that could be him coming out of somebody else's neck. Yeah, so uh, yeah. there we see our one of our brave American teams uh, mm -hmm. playing. Uh, better luck next time, guys. Y'all need to go and take the whole thing. Get it all. Win it all. Always. Uh, or just play and have fun. It's always an option. What was it you said? Doesn't matter what, how good you it do. It doesn't matter how good you do or how bad you do, as long as you have fun. I don't remember how I phrased it. It was better. It was better. It was better. It's on video time. now, though, yeah. so it's, we'll it's find preserved it forever. Hashtag um, something I said earlier. We do want to get a shout out to the judges. So we have a shot of the judging mm -hmm. team. Yep. Uh, we see Norbert, Zoja, uh, Jason Enos, everyone else. Uh, hang, you know, th those of you that take the time to organize the events and to mm -hmm. judge the events, we all have to yeah. give our our love and thanks. Uh, running things like this can be a. It's the reward is seeing everyone be happy. Yeah. And yeah. you have to kind of derive that, that pleasure yourself because sometimes it can be a very thankless job and you have to oh, deal yeah. with a lot of problems and sometimes a lot of drama. So we have to always give props and love to everyone who decides to fly to another country to facilitate someone else's fun. Yeah. I also like how there's like some ghosts in this picture. It's really nice. There are ghosts in that yeah, picture. Yeah, it's proof of the supernatural right yeah. there. Uh, and Obviously. I believe the last photo we wanted to show was Freedom Eagle. So I don't know who did this paint job, but that, hey, it's an amazing paint it's job. It's a really, really good paint it's job. It's an yes. amazing paint job. Yeah, Zoja provided most of these images. Um, Pewter did the first shot of the, of the yeah. top two teams. So we don't know whose bird this is, but this bird is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I just, the wings are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Whoever has it, I hope you're coming to Warfare Weekend. Yeah, I hope I can see this thing in person. I saw a paint job similar to this at War Machine Weekend last year, but it wasn't this one, I don't think. So, yeah. Whoever's this is, if you're in the chat especially, let us know. Yeah. Oh, somebody says that's Adam Stewart's bird. Adam Stewart from, uh, uh, from USA. USA West. Cool. There is so much freedom just ringing out of yeah, those wings. so much. Do you think it shoots electricity or? It shoots fireworks. Amazing. It shoots fireworks. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Of course, it has to. It's, it's like 4th of July all yeah, over the place. Yeah, and it just pew, 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 pew. Yeah, and, and like, it doesn't make a caca sound or whatever. 
it just blares out the national anthem. Every time <laughs> it, it just opens its mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just starts playing. Yeah. Everyone goes stationary as they put their hands over their hearts uh-huh. and just sit still. Yeah, and then fireworks. Well, we're making that yeah. model real. That's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so cool. Uh, that's all we wanted to talk about today. So let's see yeah. if we've got any last. I know there's been a ton of questions. We just had a lot to cover today. So if we didn't get to your question in chat, uh, we weren't trying to ignore you. We just yeah. had a lot to cover today. Um, so let me see if we have any other big pressing questions we can hit up real fast before we get up here. While I'm doing that, I do want to thank everyone who subscribed while we've been on. Yeah. Again, we are pushing to get 65 subs so mm-hmm. that we can unlock more emotes. And we do have the poll that we're going to have available in chat right now. We'll put in the, the link in uh, YouTube later on that uh, you can go and vote on what the next uh, emojis will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see people asking for Leadfoot spoilers. We will do Leadfoot spoilers closer to his yeah. release. Uh, so yeah. next week's dev chat is going to be a Monpok one. I'm going to be out of town mm-hmm. on vacation. And when I come back, the following Wednesday will be our Riot Quest one. And we'll see what Riot Quest stuff we end up spoiling on that one because we'll have to do yeah. more, more Riot Quest news. Uh, Chuck Dogwood is going to be Wave 3, Patrick. So he's got a little bit left to go. Yeah. Um, Matthew McWaters asked a really cool question. Is the WTC exclusive sculpt a thing we can expect in the future? So for the WTC attendees, we gave them the exclusive Morrowind Battle Priest. Yeah, with uh, the beer. That had the, the beer on it. To my knowledge, don't quote me on this, but to my knowledge, that model's not going to be released anywhere else. No, like, it's got a WTC icon on the keg under his arm. Yeah. So it's, it's branded for that event. Yeah. Will that model, will we do stuff like this for every single WTC? I mean... We would love to, yeah. right? But that's, that's a hard thing to promise because yeah. a lot of stuff happens. We've got a brand new game coming out next year with Warcaster, which is going to yeah. have a ton of new models coming out that are very different than anything you've ever seen before. So um, I would love to say yes, but I, I might end up lying if I do, and I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, any new campaign ideas you can share? I don't know what you mean. Um, Oblivion talks about being the first. Oh, there's more. Stygian, whatever. What's the name of it? I didn't know if he was talking IK or it's uh, uh, Stygian Prophecies. Stygian Prophecies, yeah. Uh, there will be more campaigns coming in the future. Expect some probably maybe late Q1 of 2020, um, yeah. where we will just give you uh, new campaigns for free to use in the Oblivion system. Um, Hunter, we haven't, I don't think we've officially announced when that Ashland Statue of Liberty alt model is coming out. No, um, so it's coming. Uh, when we know when it's coming out, we will tell you, but we haven't announced it yet. Uh, Striker, one of our, our, our most faithful and wonderful viewers, says, mm-hmm. what models of the ones that are coming out in October was the most difficult to balance? Uh, in my opinion, it was the, the, the Void and the Thamorite it was, Archon. Well, the Archons in general were an interesting challenge because they are kind of, when you boil them down to their basics, combat solos. And combat solos always have to do something or just be really good or at be killing. really good at killing things. Like if you just make an average, uh, pretty good at attacking combat solo, then they don't really have a role in a lot of armies. Mm-hmm. So figuring out how to make the all the archons do something cool, even when they're not like void touching people or doing whatever, that was that was an interesting balance thing. And then just like they're big beefy models with lots of hit points, mm-hmm. and so dialing in their cost to make sure that they weren't too expensive or too cheap. That kind of thing. So yeah, the Archons were the biggest challenge because they were something completely new. Uh, most people saying any new IK RPGs news, not other than what we said before, that we are working on something. Yeah, that we're hoping for a 2020 release, but it is still far too yeah. early to provide any details yeah. at this point. So no, I mean, we're cognizant. There's stuff yeah. happening, yeah. but nothing, nothing can we can talk about. Uh, will there be any new Infernals in Grimkin for High Command? Uh, there will not be. Uh, no, yeah. Nothing for like that is coming out for, for High Command. And I saw another question about one of the games that kind of flew by. Oh, there it is. When will White Me we start to hear more about Warcaster? Um, I can't say. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. The, we, there were some teasing type statements made at Lock and Load about when it was coming out. Like when people would be able to play it and stuff. Mm-hmm. But we haven't officially announced the release date in a real capacity for it. And the closer we get to that date, which we don't... 100% have locked down, yeah. so you guys can't know, <laughs> we'll talk more about it. So I wouldn't expect anything for, for a little while. And, and we'll, we could possibly tease some images on Twitter or whatever of models in development, but significant information about the game probably won't be 
in the next couple of months, I would guess. And there's two questions I saw in chat that I want to hit before we get out of here and go to lunch. Uh, somebody just asked, when will the next CID, uh, when will the next dynamic update drop and when is the Cirrus CID? The answer is both things are currently in discussion internally in development um, soon, but we're not giving a date because if it ends up not happening, you know, say it happens next month, great. Say it doesn't yeah. happen this year, great. It's got to happen when it's the right thing to happen. The dynamic, the next balance update in particular also has all the errata for the Oblivion book for any typos. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of content in there that isn't just we're dropping a point here or changing this thing here. Yeah. So um, they're, they're being worked on. And the other question I want to hit up real fast was somebody said, will Warcaster models be playable in War Machine and Horrors like Riot Quest? Uh, no. No, it's a, it's a new game. Just yeah. like Monster Apocalypse is a standalone game, Warcaster is going to be a standalone game. It, it shares, because it has the word Warcaster in it and stuff, it shares some, some big kind of concepts yeah. with War Machine. But, but Riot it's Quest... Not, it's not War Machine in the way that Riot Quest is kind of War Machine. Right. Riot Quest is the Saturday morning cartoon apocalyptic version of War Machine in that it takes place on the same planet in the same kingdoms and has the same characters, even though mm -hmm. canonically they're not the same characters. It is the, you know, it's yep. the cartoony heiress. It's the cartoony boom howler, right? Uh, and so because though they had such a direct connection, we were able to make them playable, but it'd be the same as, like you said, like Gorgadra coming out and having War Machine rules. Like there's a, yeah. a very distinct yeah. break there and Warcaster will be as, as distinct of a break. And we so. did get a couple of comments in chat that it was all the themes were represented at WTC, not all the models. Mm. That's what a few people have said. That every single theme, someone was playing. Got it. So somebody, that's somebody, still... somebody online said that every model but one got played. But like I said, I didn't get to fact, it. Yeah. Uh, and last one, just because it's a pertinent question. Patrick Miller says, what's going on in Lael and when will we learn about Stormbreak's conclusion? Uh, Aaron Rudell has finished the writing on it. It is going through editing right now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a lot on people's plates right now, but that final chapter is in the, the process of, yeah. of being done. So as soon as it's ready, we will let everyone know. So, Tony, air high five. ha -cha. This has been a good show. Yeah. I'm going back to Louisiana. I'm going to have some gumbo. And uh, tomorrow is Get Your Paint On, because last week's Get Your Paint On was... Uh, bothered by the internet shutting down or yeah. whatever happened, um, is going to be Nova again, and I'm going to be on it like I was supposed to be on last week. And give spoilers. And we're going to talk about Nova. Um, we are getting closer to Nova being spoiled for real now because that, that week delay, but we'll talk mm -hmm. about that. And Tony and Jordan are going to paint some Novas and I'm going to hang out. Sounds good. Yeah. Me? I'm going to go have some crawfish and some boudin. Mm -hmm. So I'll see you all in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, somebody else said that Shadows of the Retribution was the only one not played. Uh -huh. So it was all of the theme forces but one. But one. It's just somebody might have accidentally.